Offensively, number 32, Myron Hardiman, and number 24, Latreya Jones, both ended their cowboy careers in the record book. Hardiman, Wyoming's best breakaway threat of all time, gained 658 yards in six games before a knee injury sidelined him for the season. His 288 yards of all-purpose running against San Diego State, of which 230 yards were rushing and 58 yards were in punt returns, put him in the record book. Unfortunately, he was injured in the Utah game just 12 yards short of the career rushing record. That record was left up to Jones, the unsung member of the Cowboy backfield. The Hobbs New Mexico veteran did not receive the raves accorded Hardiman, but he always took it in stride. When Myron went down and the burden was placed on Jones's shoulders, he handled it with class. Latreya finished the season with 617 yards rushing and set the career record himself with 2,017 yards. A great honor for a great running back. The trigger of Wyoming's beer offense was quarterback Mark Cousins, number 11. Not big as football players go, the senior from Littleton, Colorado demonstrated great courage and ability in operating the option. He was hit on almost every down, yet missed just one game all year. He finished with 1,250 yards of total offense and was responsible for 10 touchdowns. In no single area did Wyoming improve as much as in the offensive line in 1978. Generally speaking, it was a young offensive front. Two senior veterans, Greg Kitka, number 55, and Johnny Miller, number 78, served as the glue that held things together. Kitka, who was selected to play in the East-West Shrine game, was probably the story of the year for the Cowboys. He began as the number one nose guard on defense, a position he played well last year as a junior. But when problems arose at offensive center, the coaching staff switched him. He had never played offensive center before, and if the truth were known, he really didn't like playing that position. But he did it, and performed exceptionally well. His selection as the WAC first team center proved it. Remarkably, he did this while playing in most short yardage and goal line situations at nose guard on defense. No team in college football had a kicking game any more effective than Wyoming's. With number 13, Don Clayton, doing the punting, and number 12, Dan Christopoulos, the place kicking, the Cowboys were awesome with the foot. Clayton led the conference in punting with a superb 42.9 yard average. An all-conference first team selection, Clayton drilled an 86 yard punt against Utah State, the longest in Wyoming history. The senior from Nederland, Texas, who plays baseball in the spring, had a phenomenal game against LSU with six punts for a 51.5 yard average. Christopoulos was the WAC's premier place kicker and made both the all-conference and all-academic first teams. He led the Cowboys in scoring with 71 points, including 16 of 22 field goal attempts and 23 of 27 extra points. His longest field goal of the year was 51 yards against New Mexico. In the last game of 1978, 21 Cowboy seniors ended their career. It was an outstanding class that provided great leadership. But a look at the folks' top returnees is excellent proof that Wyoming football is almost there. One of the brightest spots in the future of Cowboy football is the offensive line of scrimmage. There, five young men returned who played successful football last season. 
Leading the list are guards Mike Shaft, number 63, and Mitch Koontz, number 66. Shaft was honorable mention all-conference, and Koontz was named to the conference all-academic first team. Tackle Scott Winfield, number 79, and John Patton, number 61, are back for another year. As well as tight ends Vic Baginski, number 88, and Reggie Fowler, number 36. A pair of highly skilled junior college transfers and a cowboy veteran return at the wide receiver positions. Number 25, Dan Pittman, was a deep threat for Wyoming. And number 89, Adonis Jones, demonstrated outstanding ability after coming to Wyoming through the J.C. route. Veteran Ken Lett, number four, also returns to add his experience to the group. Offensively, the backfield is wide open for 1979. Freshman quarterback Phil Davis, number 16, was effective during his appearances on the field. He scored three touchdowns against Texas El Paso, but he will be battling for the starting job with two other young quarterbacks, Dennis Stahl and Craig Johnson. Defensively, the Cowboys appear to be in magnificent shape up front for next season. Three outstanding defensive ends, Helmut Wise, 93, Guy Frazier, 81, and Rob Yellen, 98, return to a very critical position. 71, Ogren, and 72, Jesse, will be strong returnees at the two tackle spots. At linebacker, number 49, Chuck Wilson, should be fully recovered from a knee injury, and Bob Letelt, number 87, proved to be an outstanding football player in his first year as a cowboy. He compiled 43 unassisted tackles during his initial campaign. In the secondary, eight of the Cowboys' top nine defensive point scorers return next season. The 1979 season should be an excellent opportunity for the Pokes to return to the top. They open their schedule with two big-name schools, Washington in the Pac-10 at Seattle, followed by Northwestern in the Big Ten at Chicago. Home games include defending WAC champion Brigham Young, arch-rival Colorado State, and Nevada, Las Vegas. Road trips to San Diego and Hawaii also are scheduled. The Cowboys are well on their way to a conference championship. With the young architect Bill Lewis and a squad high on ability and courage, the Pokes are almost there. 1979 could be the year they make it.